Jason Lee Podcast. Welcome back to an all new episode of the Jason Lee Podcast. What a day it's been, what a week it's been. Um, I know that Rob is excited because all of you have agreed with him and I don't care. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I believe America missed the mark. Mm. The last episode of the Jason Lee Podcast, I talked about my friend Cameron Newton, who was wrongfully attacked <laughs> by Dr. Bryant, oh, God. who's a phenomenal doctor, by the way, super smart and intelligent. I love the way she delivers um, her. She She's different, and I really like her, and I, I can't wait to have her on the show. But I disagree. I was advocating on behalf of Sierra and Russell Wilson and families like them all over the world <laughs> who've been wrongfully oh, attacked God. because if you missed it, this is she went on the Cam Newton show, the Funky Friday show with Cam Newton, and she addressed him dropping dick off all over the world with eight kids, multiple baby moms. He has a new baby right now with my friend Jasmine. Hey, Jasmine. And talks about having more kids. He didn't say with more women. And Dr. Bryant basically called him out for all these broken homes that he had. And Rob agreed. And I said, well, I was just trying to understand it. So anyway, this is what was said at the last podcast that all of you wrongfully supported him. <laughs> Take a look. I have said, I acknowledge he's an active father. He's in their lives. Nick Cannon, you know, he's out dropping dick off, has 12 kids about all these different women. She went on his show and had a lot to say about that. And actually called them low-functioning or low-vibrating women or something. I don't know what, what she said exactly. Maybe we have that. Maybe not. Um, but I think that to generalize him in totality based on the epidemic that our culture may be going through, I don't think is fair because she doesn't know how he parents. But she's not even, from what I understand, uh, sh Dr. Bryant's not even assuming he's a good or bad parent, an active or inactive parent, a present or non-present parent. He's saying if you're not in the home that you started to create with that one woman, that you then are in a broken home with a blended family. And so that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be a bad thing because, hold on, Sierra is with a good man who has finally built a home for her family that her other man didn't. And he's actually being what looks like a more present father than her other man did. So that blended family to that broken home actually built a home that her family can identify with. So how do you take a Russell Wilson and a Sierra and not look at that and say, if she wouldn't have broke that home, she'd have been with the no shit. Hey, future. Sorry. <laughs> and not a guy who actually built a real home for her family. Go, but I don't think that is the the point she's making. I think the conversation is to the point that you made earlier, right? So we have this. I, I think is becoming a problem. We have this whole culture of people who say, "I want to drop off as much nut as I can in as many different people as I can, so I can see my seed everywhere." But at the end of the day, when you have all of these kids who are coming home and their dad's not there, it it may be a critical day in that kid's development where something really important happened to him or her at school and they come home and they can't address that circumstance with their father because he's not there. Because I turned he, out fine. Because you did, but the idea that you had to deal with it is what she's saying. This I it they are creating homes that are broken because they the the parents of that child are not there to collectively parent when that child is there. So he might be off with one of the other families at that point. It's, it's not saying he's a bad person, but this idea that we can just like procreate wherever we want and then abandon the responsibility day to day for that child is not fair. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. If I decide to go have a child by myself with a surrogate, is mm -hmm. that a broken family? According to her definition. No. Not Now, now we're backtracking. No, no. According to her. No. Wait, wait. According to her. If you don't have a mother and a father. That's not what who, she said. Okay, so what? Because because I created with a donor. No, I mean, be, I'm the donor. Because yeah. I created with a surrogate, then it's not a broken family. I th I think the, the, the idea that you have. If you want to take time to think about your response. I don't. Okay. No, I don't. I'm, I think the idea that you have, two, you have two parents in a circumstance. They don't have to be a mom and a dad. It could be two dads. It could be two moms. Whatever it is, if you've created this unit together and then 
you decide to go create three more units and now you're not available to that unit, that's the conversation. If I create a child with my surrogate and mm -hmm. I'm in a relationship at the time because this person has identified to me that they are worthy of a lifelong partnership with me and I've identified with them that I'm worthy and together we're going to move forward and we plan. Mm -hmm. And then people change. This person change gets addicted to drugs. I work with them through their addiction. They don't want to change. I end that relationship and I move on for the betterment of me and my child and find somebody who mirrors the life vision for my life that I want to be with and is a good parent, co-parent to my, my child. And now our child, that's now a blended family in a broken home. But I think, again... No, yes or no. It's a broken home and a blended family. No, again, I'm I'm saying mm -mm, I don't think mm -mm, it's a, it's mm -mm. not a it's not a. I'm sorry. I'm going to be Kamala Harris. You're going to be Donald Trump. <laughs> Is it a broken home and now a blended family? I don't think a blended family is necessarily a broken home. What I am saying is I understand what she's saying about the idea of creating multiple families selfishly and you're not available to those families at all times because you are now splitting your time between three different families. So I don't think the idea of leaving a relationship that's not healthy is not, if you're in, if you're in an unhealthy relationship, it's abusive, whatever it may be, yes, you should walk away. Because those comments could make a woman who's in an abusive relationship right now feel guilted to stay in an unhealthy the relationship for the sake of keeping a non-broken family when she's in a broken family but i don't think that's broken what she's relationship saying. but I that's think she, i think she's, she i think she she to me those comments were they sounded i mean very well put together her wordplay was great she apologized kind of to not attack you whatever <laughs> even though she attacked but i think she was responding to the attitude she thought cam newton was giving off saying he just want to have more kids because he had eight kids my grandmother had 15 with multiple men in different states, where she, five different men, I think. And she took care of all her children. They all didn't turn out, all of them didn't turn out, you know, successful or whatever. Most of them did. Um, I think only one had a very, one or two had, well, three, had a very, had, you know, issues with drugs or battles or whatever. But all of them, for the most part, turned out fine. So where, help me understand where am I not seeing this right? Yes, and I think the issue is you're you're changing the conversation. Oh. That's that's what the problem is. She's specifically having a conversation about people who are selfishly creating multiple homes where they're not active participants on a consistent basis. Like that's the conversation. So, I think it's but you're like now having a conversation about the secondary home of a person who left a home that was broken and found a new home to create happiness in. Well, like that's well, a different I'm sorry, but the conversation has expanded. <laughs> and and for me, I understand, okay, I will agree with you, America, and her, that if you're intentionally going out and creating broken homes, it is wrong. And it's they're broken. However, when Future broke up that home with Sierra, that was a broken home, right? Yes. yes. We agree. Yes. See America, we can agree. <laughs> then when Russell Wilson came in with Sierra and then had kids with her, they became a blended family, right? Yes. We're still in agreement. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but now is that home broken? I don't think so. But I think the, I don't either. But the blended family is a result of two broken homes. Right. But is it blended and broken? I mean, in a sense, because the... Uh, uh, nope, don't get to choose neutrality. Yes or no, because you, you don't want to be wrong with America. No, I don't I'm, have a problem I'm being not wrong. Saying, I'm not saying... I, but again, this is a sep a whole separate conversation. I understand. So now I'm starting the second conversation. <laughs> is a blended family with broken people still broken? Essentially, yes, because now you're co-parenting with two separate households because the original family is broken. So, so Sierra and Russell are broken. No, I, think that I, I don't think their relationship is a broken relationship. And I don't think... Is their but home broken? Their home is blended. I don't know if I don't know how she would approach okay. that definition. Her Dr. Bryant, I'm not a doctor. Okay. Let's just end it here. Dr. <laughs> Bryant, you are officially invited to come and clear up this mess you created for America. And Rob, the one time you get people to agree to you, I'm gonna give you your flowers. <laughs> <laughs> It won't be every day mm. that you get those. So enjoy them. <laughs> Thank All you. All right.
Anyway, I'm still on this campaign. Those of you who are all over the United States of this good America, please make sure you are registered to vote because November 5th is literally less than 60 days away. We're about 60 days away. And in Stockton, if you are there, make sure that you vote for me in District 6 and Christina Fugazi for mayor. Um, I recently sat down uh, with Christina and interviewed her for Hollywood Unlocked. It's over there on our YouTube channel. You can go check it out. Here's a clip from that interview. Take a look. Who would ever thought Christina Fugazi would be on Hollywood Unlocked? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike some of the other cities where you elect the mayor and the mayor pretty much is the president of your town, that is not the way Stockton government works. No, I think I'm the best person for the job. I know you're the best person <laughs> for the job. When you get elected, what is your first 180-day plan? We need to build trust. We need to make sure that the public knows that they have people that are representing them that are actually working for them. Why is it that the people with the deep pockets not supporting you and giving you all the money so you can win this election? Because they can't tell me what to do. They want to be the puppet master mm -hmm. and they want to be in charge of the people sitting in those seats because then their hands are clean. Mm. This city has failed young people in many ways. No, I agree. This city will never succeed unless the children of our largest school district succeed. Why do they not understand that it takes four people to be aligned in order to actually make the city operate the way that they promised? It's unfortunate. Measure A was a special tax. It's a general fund tax, unaudited. We look like we still have a bankrupt city, even though we're almost at a billion dollars for our budget. And it's inexcusable in my opinion. But we can change that. We can, four votes. It's almost like the community's on this hamster wheel trying to find an answer. Listen, we're doing the people's work. I've always worked for the people. I've done it as a teacher. I've done it as elected official. And there ain't no change in that. All right, great. Now that we got that out the way, let's just go and jump right into it. It's the Tea with Jason Lee. Baby, this podcast is a well-oiled machine, I tell you. If you would have saw how Rob walked in here looking like a Dalmatian earlier with all these spots <laughs> on his face with his unfinished makeup, let me tell you something. I don't know how oh Destiny's God. Child in Vogue TLC and all the girls did it. Um, uh, I don't. But anyway, here we are. All right, Trump and uh, and Kamala Harris are still on their way to the race of a lifetime. Let me tell you something. This is not an election of Republican and Democrat. This is a fight for democracy. Everybody keeps uh, going on my social media asking me why I endorse Kamala but still talk. Here's the deal. Democracy only works if we defend it and criticize it and hold people accountable. Just because I'm riding with Kamala does not mean that I am not going to hold her accountable. I'm going to tell you right now, Kamala, I'm speaking directly to you. Let me throw you the shade cam real quick. You talk a lot about DEI, and yet you raised $500 million, and you've not spent any money that I know of with black-owned media, not black-targeted, not going over there to the folks who don't look like you and I and paying them millions of dollars to target people that look like us. I'm saying that you are the DEI queen, because that's the topic that you keep talking about, and you are the subject of people saying that you are a DEI hire, knowing that that's not true. You earned that, just like we earned the community that we've built, and you have an obligation to walk the talk. And so just because I criticize her and criticize you, Kamala, Ms. V Madam Vice President, soon to be president, I'm still going to hold you accountable. And everybody watching, that's what democracy looks like. It doesn't mean that you just get led around by the nose and do whatever people tell you to do because the party tells you. No, you, democracy only works if you defend it and if you hold it accountable. And so I'm going to ride with Kamala until she get in. And then I'm going to spin the block and it's, it's on. I'm going to hold you accountable, okay? And I hope I still get invited to all the events with chicken and waffles. Well, anyway, in the Donald Trump and Kamala Harris battle for office, last week we left off with Harris doing her first interview since becoming the Democratic nominee. Now, Harris's Republican opponent reacted to her sit-down by calling her the weakest presidential candidate in history on crime. And he took to X, formerly known as Twitter, and this is what he had to say. He said Kamala Harris is the weakest presidential candidate in history on crime. She's allowed millions of people to pour through our borders, many from prisons, mental institutions, and indeed terrorists coming in at all levels never seen before. What gives her the right to run for president? She got no votes to Biden's 14 million. She failed in her previous attempt, was the first one out of 22 people to quit, never made it to Iowa, and now she's a presidential candidate. This is a threat to democracy. 
nah, Donnie, this is actually democracy because Biden decided it was better for the country and democracy to step aside and let a stronger candidate come forward. She stepped out of the race probably and didn't go to Iowa because she saw that Biden was the stronger person for democracy and she fell back and then later stepped up as part as 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 the second in charge. Uh, uh, in order to help carry democracy across the finish line. And they beat you. Remember that clip where she said, we did it, Joe? If you forgot, take a look. We did it. We did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> so anyway, Trump continued to attack Harris and her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, who, by the way, I am a fan. Of. Let me give him a round of applause. I like Tim Waltz. Don't know where he came from. His son is a fr uh, his son is like a, a friend or family member in my head at this point. I support <laughs> him. Well, uh, Donald Trump called him Tampon Tim. That's the new name that he gave him. Uh, and if you don't know the joke, Republicans gave Waltz a new nickname because he signed a law last year which required public schools in Minnesota to put free menstrual products, i.e. pads and tampons, in all bathrooms for students in 4th through 12th grades. I don't see anything wrong with that, do you? Mm -mm. And it was partly done because there were a lot of after-school activities, like sporting events, where the, the all of the restrooms were taken over by female students in certain circumstances, and some by male students in other circumstances. They just wanted access to required products to everyone. So, but why he acting like he put a transsexual station in every bathroom? Because they just want to stoke fear. And you can gaslight people around children. Exactly. Y'all will be talking about the weather outside, be like, man, it's hot outside. Yeah, you know they're trying to do that to our kids. <laughs> like, what is that? Is that because that tears at people's... It's the easiest thing to do is stoke fear. So people don't do the research to look into what is actually going on. They're just, they just, their their biggest fear is what they're going to react to. Like the fear where those kids just got killed yesterday at a school in Georgia. Yep. Again, you guys aren't going to do anything to address guns in the country because mental health's not real. NRA is a big funder of your campaigns, but what do I know? Well, here's Trump taking aim at Waltz and Harris at his rally in Johnson, Pennsylvania. Listen. Lightweight. Did you see her on television last night? This is going to be the president. This is going to be the president of our country? I don't think so. Sitting propped up on a desk with this guy, this, this uh, tampon Tim, tampon. <laughs> and that's the first interview she's done and like, nobody's ever seen anything like it. And if you're too weak to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with a person that was so soft. You know, I know Dana, she's always, you know, always nasty. She was so nice to the Democrats. You see what's going to happen, but it's already been happening. They've killed many, many people in our country. I was at the border last week, and I was with the parents and other family members of some of the young kids that got killed, viciously killed by illegal immigrants coming into our country. We can't have this. It's just our country. It's not sustainable. Our country is going to fail. These people are stupid people that are running our country. They don't have any common sense. They believe in an ideology. And if you look at Kamala and you look at what she's done to every place she's touched has turned to shit. Every single place she's touched. You know, in my own campaign, I could say a lot of the same things about the opponent, but I'm choosing to take the higher road. I just don't feel like you need to bash a person. You just said her name incorrect again, and you've been told multiple times, even by her nieces at the DNC, how to say her name properly, but you don't have any respect for her. You don't have a respect for women in general. You don't have any respect for black people, although you somehow use them as a prop towards, uh, you know, putting your word out there. Well, at the same rally, Trump invited more rappers to publicly endorse him, like New York drill rapper uh, Fabio Foreign, who claims Trump flew him out and provided dinner. <laughs> now, Fabio, you know we like you over here. You definitely got to pull up and explain how you went and danced for dinner for Trump. <laughs> You can't dance for dinner for daddy. Well, anyway, you and Latin uh, trap star Anuel, uh, a Latin singer, and, a, and another singer named Justin Quieles, who nobody, I don't know who he is. But anyway, they spoke on stage. Take a listen to the two Puerto Rican reggaeton artists. Listen. Thank you, Mr. President, for having us here. For me, it's a real blessing to be here. I'm from Puerto Rico. 
we've, we are, yeah, we are a big part of United States. We really depend on the United States. Since Trump hasn't been around, Puerto Rico's, yeah, it's not a secret. We've been going through a lot as a country, and yeah, Biden always promised, promised. A lot of politicians always promise through the years. Puerto Rico's not a country. <laughs> I would just like to start with, did, you were aware of Puerto Rico's yes. not, an, not a country. Puerto Rico is actually a part of the United States. You're the same country that he went through paper towels at. You guys forgot that? Look. <laughs> Is this why your life, your wife left you? I'm just, I'm just trying to understand if, like, were you sitting at home with your wife and talking about the Puerto Rican country, and then she realized <laughs> at that moment that she wanted to do better and she wanted to make her love life better again, greater again. Well, either way, another mega maniac, Amber Rose also spoke out after Harris's first interview. And here's what she recently posted on her Instagram story about Joe Biden and the vice president. If Joe did such a good job and everything is so great, why is Harris promising to fix everything on day one? <laughs> but isn't Trump saying he's going to fix everything on day one? Have you ever known anybody to fix anything on day one? <laughs> no, not possible. You know, I'm actually telling people as I'm running for city council, nothing's going to change the night I get elected. I don't take office until January. Nothing's going to change on the day I get elected. It takes time. You can implement things, and there will be things implemented where you will start to fill, and you're already filling in stock in a big shift because people are like, oh, my God, he's coming. Slumlords are starting to fix their homes. You know, uh, you know, people are starting to kind of get on board with the direction I want to go, and I think that will happen as uh, Harris takes office, but... That I don't think that that was a fair criticism, but we already know Amber didn't ask God what he thought about it before she said that because she don't believe in God. Mm -mm. Uh, Remember the days Amber and I used to be friends? Yes. And call each other up. Sit and drink that a cabana. Yeah. Hookah. <laughs> hookah. Remember the night we yeah. all had hookah? Me, you, her, Common, mm -hmm. and Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Well, those two aren't together anymore, neither are us. Yeah. Well, Neither are we. Okay, well, listen, Tyrese is another celebrity who recently criticized Biden and Harris. During an Instagram Live with civil rights attorney Ben Crump, he had this to say, look. And I am praying not for just one race, one people. I am praying for world peace. I am mm -hmm. praying for us to do become more intentional about having those hard conversations and dialogue to say, if we can just sit here and figure this out, then no more blood blood has to be shed. I would love one day to put some new things and boundaries in place pertaining to, pertaining to the, the, the police and black and brown culture. I mean, the moment that President Biden became the president, president, he signed it into law to protect the Asian community. What is that law that, that, that he signed? Asian hate crime bill. President Biden and Kamala Harris signed an Asian hate crime bill, which makes it beyond illegal to ever purposely and maliciously do anything. Tyrese, you said her name wrong. It's Kamala, not Kamala, not Kimla. It's Kamala, can y'all please get it right? But just like you got that wrong, you also got that wrong about her. You do realize that Biden and Harris, uh, the administration, put forth the first federal legislation, the anti-lynching bill, while they were in office, that no other president, including Daddy Trump, has created it a, a law that makes it illegal to hang y'all. But nobody does the research. Am I missing something? 
No, they just don't do their research. They just talk out of the side, the side of their neck. And like that bill, people call it the anti-Asian hate bill, but it's the COVID-19 Crimes Act, which is a hate crime bill that is like all encompassing. But yes, it was sparked by Asian crime. But like you said, the Emmett Till lynching bill, Kamala Harris put that bill forward in 2019 and the Republicans rejected it. So they, they've been trying to do this, but it's not them. See, I know a lot about politics, but even when I go need a step further, I ask him because he pays attention <laughs> to all this stuff. Can y'all just phone a friend? Even on how to become a millionaire, you can phone a friend. Yes. Can y'all start phoning for some friends? We'll listen. <laughs> Journalist and commentator Roland Martin fired back. Now, you know, me and Roland have had our bouts. We have not been friends or friendly. I recently unblocked him and we exchanged numbers and we've been talking. In fact, we've been talking about you, Kamala, not spending no money with black owned media. So you need to get it together because I'm not going to let you get off. I'll be right back. Well, he didn't like what Tyrese had to say. And this is what he said. All right, y'all. <clears throat> let me make this video real quick. OK, like real quick. Tyrese, you do not know what you're talking about. That video where you're talking about an anti-Asian crime bill, that is a lie. Please. Learn the fact check before you start talking. I have debunked this nonsense numerous times on Roland Martin Unfiltered. That is a lie. I literally have walked through the bill on my show. In the summary, it talks about the attacks on Asian Americans. It is called the COVID-19, it specifically, it specifically mentions COVID-19. If you actually read the bill, which I've done, on the air multiple times it does not only apply to asian americans it applies to everybody it also all it did was also create one job that compiled data and so again tyrese you're wrong you are 100 percent wrong and so please all of you entertainers when y'all jump out here and make videos and people run with it i need you to do some verification do some fact checking before you do that okay so you're wrong it is not people called it the asian hate crime bill because of the attacks and if you're also going to run your mouths out here and go oh, there's never been a bill for african americans that's a lie there have been three hate, hate crimes bills specific to african americans the first one you were dealing with the civil rights act in 60 uh 64 okay then you all ha also had uh, the, the hate crimes bill that dealt when black churches were being burned. I also broke that down on Roller Martin Unfiltered. And then, of course, you had the lynching bill that was also signed. Okay? And the, don't, don't forget, you also have the Matthew Shepard uh, James Byrd Act that dealt with hate crimes. Yeah, James Byrd. Leave Uncle Roland alone. Why are you riding around in the car getting all worked up with that seatbelt almost yeah, cutting your oxygen off? Y'all going to have Roland hit somebody out here in these streets making these videos in real time. Roland, you could have got back to your studio and did it. By the way, you can get back to your studio and call me and ask, tell me where this money is. Because I ain't forgot about that. And I, I Go talk about that on your show. Uh, well, but I agree with Roland. He's educating you. Phone a friend. He said the same thing that you said and I said, adding in another third part of the work that has been done specifically for African-Americans. But to Tyrese's credit, he's also gone through a major breakup. He's lost a lot. He cries every time he's doing an interview. He's probably just really sad. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. Tyrese, you've gone through a lot. Please don't call me saying I did anything wrong because I'm just summarizing what you didn't do. You didn't do your research. And that's the problem. That is the huge, the, the hugest issue I have with this election process. <clears throat> Two part. One, People are not researching issues, and two, there's voter apathy. Everybody has to care enough to vote, and everybody has to do their research before they vote. And, and, and if you don't take anything from this part of the show, and the reason why we're covering politics every show at the top is because if not, y'all, I'm going to have to pack up and take Gucci and Chanel to another country. Because at this point, like, I'm telling you right now, if I don't win in Stockton, which I'm, I, I feel very confident I'm going to win, but if I didn't win, I'm literally packing everything up. I'm taking my dogs and we out because I'm just going to sit and watch <laughs> y'all burn this thing down until it's ready to be built up again. Uh, by the way, it's also not um, Mercury retrograde anymore, so there's no excuses for stupidity. <laughs> well, Kamala is still being accused of pandering to black people for votes. White House press secretary and friend of Hollywood Unlocked, Korean Jean-Pierre, had to brush off a question asked by Peter Ducey from Fox News. 
they be asking the craziest stuff to this black woman, and you know she is like five minutes out from her job. She is over y'all. This is what she had to say. Since when does the vice president have what sounds like a southern accent? You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. And you all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I, I mean, this is... <laughs> she was talking about unions in Detroit using uh, one tone of voice. Is this something that same you Same line... Okay, Peter. That she, uh, she used the same line in Pittsburgh, and it sounded like she at least had some kind of a southern I think, drawl. I mean, what? do you hear the question that you're... I mean, do you think Americans seriously think that this is an important question? They care... You know what they care about? They care about the economy. They care about lowering costs. They care about health care. That's what Americans care about. So, That's what they okay, want to well, hear. This is something... They care about, your colleague just asked me about, democ what basically we talked about, went back and forth about democracy and freedom. That's that, what they care about. I'm not even going to enter even going to entertain some question about the press. It's just, it, it's just hearing it sounds so ridiculous. Well, but hearing it is... The question, it, I'm talking about the questions, is, is just insane. Is that how she talks in meetings here? I, I'm just, come on, Peter. It's called, that's a black woman. It's called a black woman. And tread very lightly addressing how we speak. Because sometimes when y'all speak, it sounds like this. 100%. <laughs> and, and guess what? Um, we don't want to hear that either. Uh, Kamala Harris is a black woman. It's Kamala Harris. It's not Kamala. You know, y'all just bad. And look. Kamala, when you get in, please bring back the the, the whole BET special move. I mean, we going to paint that White House going to be so black. Y'all going to be mad. That's why y'all really mad. That's why they really mad. But I'm excited to see what happens. But you still owe us 100 of that $500 million. So call all the black media. I introduced you to us. All right. That's it. Well, Queen, Nyja, and Clarence uh, are trolling fans. And um, I don't know that they should be doing that. I know that Clarence is in the gym losing that extra weight because I've been watching him on Snapchat. Clarence, you're still looking like a good old snack. And Queen Nyja, that ass is so fat. I don't know what's happening. But baby, you worked or earned or paid for. Whatever you did, you look fa fabulous. Both of you are, are gorgeous. And I love the fact that you both seem really happy. Well, Queen is now trolling fans amid pressure to marry her boyfriend of six years. Now, remember, they did this whole thing where they were asking how long a person should be engaged before you move on if the person doesn't intend to marry you. Well, they've been together six years and he ain't put a ring on it. I don't know if it's because the TikTok money slowed down and he can't afford it or because her musical career took off and she had a tour or both of them just really don't like sleeping in the same bed for too long. I don't know. Well, either way. Uh, back in May, we talked about Queen and Clarence after the two offered marriage advice to fans on their joint YouTube channel. Now, Queen caused an uproar after telling Clarence that if he didn't propose before 10 years, that she would leave him. You don't remember that? Take a look. All right, next question. Boyfriend of 10 years not asking to marry me. We've been living together for four years. After 10 years? 10 years? 10 years. <laughs> well, no, those that ain't talking about me. Yeah. Ten years after ten years, and y'all been living day. together for four years, so y'all do have experience with living together. What you gotta say about it? I want to hear your take on it first. I mean, you should probably have a conversation with him, maybe see if he has that maybe in his head, or is he planning to do it? Two things, two observations, really quick, Rob. One, Clarence, you are so fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's unwanted. Uh, lust, but it is what it is. Second thing is, you guys need to get some carpet and, and pictures on the wall because there was a little echo there. I can't stand an echo. Uh, Did you hear it? Yeah, it's, it was a major echo. Um, but he's good looking, right? It's very. Mm -hmm. And she's good looking. Beautiful. So for you, Queen, if you're laying next to a man that looks that good, and you look that good, and he ain't putting a ring on it, he don't want you. He's literally wearing out the lining of that thing until he moves on, and he gonna leave you there to pick up the pieces and go get somebody else while he goes out and gets somebody, unless he has somebody else. 10 years? I'm thinking about it right now. If I get with somebody today, you mean to tell me I'm gonna be 57 before you put a ring on this thing? Are you crazy? No. I don't know how much mileage I have left, so you better get it while it's good. Yeah, I definitely don't think it takes 10 years to figure out that you want to marry someone. 10 that's, years? That's quite a long time. You're already a squatter. <laughs>
<laughs> you're already a squatter by like nine years and 200 something days. <laughs> now, you in some states you have le- the the oh, you're married, rights. right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. In yeah. some states, what is that called? Um, uh, that's okay. You're already pretty much a thing. Your kids see you. I mean, you you're joined. And on top of that, Nija, he's laying next to you with no paintings on the wall, no rugs. He don't even have permanent residency set up in your house. Anyway, the echoes that we heard of him maybe not being committed for the long term were there. Well, on July 29th, Queen Nija and Clarence White celebrated their six-year anniversary <laughs> of being boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm sorry, but we're not ever celebrating six years of being boyfriend and boyfriend. (laughs) Like, for real, after three years, at this point, by 50, we're locked down, right? uh, Yes. Well, a month later, Queen is now trolling fans about the marriage. Look at this photo, okay? She put bride-to-be. I don't see any significant ring on any significant finger. Well, reacting to fans claiming... Queen is pressuring Clarence to propose. She had this to say. This is clearly trolling, LOL. But even if it was real, look at how people find something negative regardless. That's why I'm going to the courthouse. Well, there's other updates. Her baby daddy went on and started dragging her, uh, basically saying he ain't going to be with you. He ain't going to marry you. And he is Chris Sales, who you know was accused of many things, and they had a really toxic relationship where she fled him like most of y'all did from Cuba and went right over there to this man. So she went from an a emotionally and potentially physically, I think there were some concerns, or I'll just say allegedly. Allegedly. Abusive relationship to a relationship that is just emotionally absent from like a real permanent thing. Well, either way, Chris, who's been gone for so long, who's had so many other issues with other girlfriends, is now interjecting himself back into the relationship. Let me tell you, I have an issue with exes who become exes but still want to be presences. Do not be in somebody else's relationship if it did not work out for you. Once you are an ex, you need to move on. Even me with little fame is dealing with somebody claiming to be an ex who never even had the title to earn the title ex. So, Chris, I think that you're just bitter and mad, and I think you would feel validated if this didn't work out because she left you, and then she went over here for 10 years and left, and he left her, or she left him. You've been waiting 10 years to feel validated. Some of y'all are sick. Meanwhile, no disrespect to anybody, but metabolisms have been slowing down in the process. Y'all need to be focused on this waistline, okay? And you need to go get you some Ozempic and just kind of chill out, maybe run a little bit, not run from charges, not run from allegations, not run from exes, but just run, just run on, run. Because at this point, I don't know what you're proving. And Quinn, you need to stay in the studio because I've not heard music from you lately. And, you know, you, Saweetie, all y'all just dormant out here. Y'all need to get active. And if you drop the new project between now and... Last week or last month or last year, I didn't hear it, so the noise ain't loud enough. I've heard more about a man that ain't putting a ring on it. And Clarence, you can go get some Cracker Jacks, find you a ring in there, just or get you some tweed, and just make it like a symbolic thing. Ooh. Would you stay with somebody that didn't put a ring on after 10 years? I mean, we would have to have a real conversation, but at, at, that real conversation would probably, for me, be after like four years. Like, 10 years is way... He didn't answer the question. See, the gays be lonely too. Y'all be getting roommates. (laughs) Oh, and y'all y'all be getting roommates and having this love fest. And I get it. Sometimes the rent is easier when you have two parties. But I'm not. I would rather live in my domicile by myself (laughs) with no than to settle with somebody who doesn't believe that forever is an option for me. I'm, I'm sorry. You need to. You need to. I need. I need an ASAP Rocky to my Rihanna at this point. Or just leave me alone. I'll be single for the rest of my life and travel around the world and just, you know, collect flags as I go. (laughs) (laughs) Not flags. Well, let me end on a positive note. You both are very gorgeous. Um, I love your online activity. This is me trolling you the way that you were trolling us, Queen. So now you got it back. Um, I still don't think he really wants you because he didn't put a ring on it. Uh, and, and, And Clarence, if you ever change your mind about anything... 
I don't require a ring. <laughs> I just require a good time. All right, goodbye. I don't know if it's Mental Health Month, but I'm going to go ahead and oh, say that this next segment is sponsored by Mental Health Awareness. Tamar Braxton and JR are dragging each other. JR Robinson, this is a mess. And I will tell you, Tamar, you deserve everything you're getting because you poked this polar bear. <laughs> you poked the polar bear. And Jeremy, the last time I said something on my show, you went and gave an analogy that was so white I couldn't understand it. But you said something about the half the milk is the the glass of milk is half empty or something. I don't know what you said, but it was so smart that my, you you fried my brain. But but at least you're watching, Tamar. You know we used to be friends, but you show you and Amanda Seal showed us that you need to continue to work on you. And I really care care. <clears throat> Saw them flags. <laughs> Is it me or does the Lord reach down in my throat and grab it right when I'm about to do something that I shouldn't be doing? Stop it from getting too ugly. <laughs> well, Tamar, you know. I used to really believe you, but now the good Lord has cleared my eye ducts and I see you now. Tamar Braxton and Jeremy J.R. Robinson are going at it again online. I don't know where you were when it was going down or where you were or where I was, but wherever we all were, we were all in a three-way chat with you guys because Blueface and Krishan have gone to jail and you guys have stepped up to take their spot. Now we know, Tamar, you were trying to take Krishan's spot when you invited her to that concert. You had no business asking her to perform at and then set her up and she put you on blast. Well, they're at it again. Now the couple that we're talking about, these two, they first met on Peacock's dating show, Queens Court, and got engaged during the season finale in March 2023. Now, since the viral engagement, they've experienced a tumultuous on and off relationship. Notably, Tamar claimed that JR dumped her uh, the same hour that her car got broken, broken into last September. In November, during their breakup, JR took Tommy Lee on a date after she shaded Tamar. Now, if you forgot about that, we had Tommy here on the show, and this is where Tamar unfollowed me and basically said, I could no longer be your friend because I had a job to do. If you forgot that show, Please go watch the millions and millions who have on the Hollywood Unlocked YouTube channel. But here's a clip from where Tommy talked about their date. Look. You took then you guys went to the game. You posted the video of you guys courtside at the game. I did post it, but you want to know why? First, I was gonna treat him like a normal person because he asked me, he was like, Let me ask you this. What brought you to my page? I was like, I'm not gonna lie. I was being messy because, like, you know what I'm saying? I had a situation with your people. And I just, you know what I'm saying? I never thought that you was going to ask me on a date or anything like that. But now, talking to you, I feel like you're a real person. And I don't even want to go that route. We could really just, like, see what this going to be. And he was like, damn, that's real. Like, we should do that, da 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 And he just was just keep trying to fly me out there. And then he was just like, um... I was like, he was like, it's gonna be private. He was like, I'm a super private person. I got, I know all these um, restaurant owners in Atlanta. I'ma just get us a private, 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 right? The day before I fly out, he tells me, he sends me tickets. So I'm like, huh? Private, but you want Tommy Lee to go sit on the floor at the Hawks game. That's not private. So that let me know like, yeah, this ain't, just go with my move. Play this shit, like, and get that whole slap, like, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, mama, ah, uh, ah. Uh. The crackhead could be right, like, I could play with you in your real life if I want to. Days later, JR then reunited with Tamar. And remember, they went, oh, they went to a game. They went to the same game that JR took Tommy, and she was showing off her white knight as if she had some big prize. Okay, she thought she was the Kobe of it all. Okay, that she had ran, the, that she had got the ring, that she won the championship because she had him at the same location he was just at with Tommy. Who told us all that he was eating her butt? <laughs> to see two black women fighting over a white man just reminds me of slavery. Like, what type of plantation opportunity is this? Is this plantation TV? Because y'all... What? 
<laughs> I'm just enjoying the commentary. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I never saw this activity playing out on Braxton Family Values. Tony didn't teach her. Evelyn didn't teach her. Tracy, Tamala, all the all the, they all teased. All the T's over there. And there, there were no T was teaching you that this was acceptable. Well, either way, it went on and on because in early August of this year, Tamar claimed to be single before turning around and claiming that JR is her husband. Remember she went on the show with Carlos King and let him shade him and drag him? That We talked about that here. Well, now Tamar is accusing JR of cheating on her with 25-year-old woman. Take a look. Paid in my face for a 25-year-old shaking my head tool meant to say took my jewelry took me to turks and all along had a whole tramp i hate you jeremy robinson certified lover boy you know the rest ain't that the song where they say they're a pedophile mm -hmm. so basically she's trying to make an insinuation but a 25 year old while she's younger than him is not illegal and you live in Atlanta, the age of 16. I don't know how. Y'all need to change that law. <laughs> well, either way, JR claims that he's been single for six months. He did a six-minute and 14-second response. By the way, crotch all out there. Look. You know, I initially was going to take the high road in this situation and not say anything. But the reality is I cannot keep getting attacked. My character can't keep getting attacked. I can't keep being thrown under the bus because someone can't control their anxiety and someone can't control these delusional thoughts about things that aren't real. I, I am in no way wanting to attack anybody. My purpose in, in my life has always been to protect. I haven't ran the social media every time something happened to me in that relationship. Because trust me, with all the receipts and all the things that have happened, I could have. But I chose to do what a real man does, and that is protect the person that I've been with. In this situation, I'll be very clear. I've been single for the last six months. We have been trying to identify what that looks like, closing one chapter and figuring out what it's like to be friends again. I've been very specific about my boundaries. I've been very specific about where we stand as friends. Go date anybody you want. I'm gonna date when I'm ready. I am emotionally unavailable to you and I'm physically unavailable to you. Now, birthday comes up, plans are put in place. Of course, I want someone that I consider to be family to be involved in that because if anybody knows her she is big on birthdays i don't lead people on i'm very direct listen if if anything that you're doing or that you want to do comes with an agenda i don't want to be involved in it at all i don't want you to be involved in my birthday plans i don't want you to come to turks and caicos this is not a reconciliation time whatever you decide you're doing is because we're friends and because I'm still being involved in my son's life. I still would love for you to have a relationship with my children, but not to the extent that you make up these stories that aren't real. I went to New Orleans. I booked my room at Four Seasons on Booking.com and didn't realize that the card I'm using, which also ends in the same three last numbers, was tied to something that we booked several months ago. No harm, no foul. We're talking $900. Stop it. While I'm in New Orleans for a funeral, my really good 25 plus year friend who passed away, I spent time with his family. I extended my stay because I needed time to reset. So I get a call yesterday. Hey, did you stay at Four Seasons? Yeah, I did. Uh, in fact, I extended. I gave them my card and everything's good. Why? What's up? Oh, well, I got a call about some chick who used my card at four season i said that's not possible this is funny ha 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 what, what are you talking about well i thought we can friends we can talk about it but this is laughable i didn't stay with anybody at the four seasons i'm not seeing anybody didn't wasn't on a date none of that if i was you're my friend what do i have to hide about that 
um, I'll just say cooler heads didn't prevail. And next thing you know, I'm on her story and I'm being accused of things which are just blatantly not true. Um, I have never led Tamar Braxton on. I never will, nor will I. There are people, hate the name drop, but hey, Carlos King, you got me involved in this. You're part of the reason why we became friends. Um, but I've been very clear about my boundaries. I've been very clear about wanting to have a friendship, but not to the extent that, yo, friends don't throw each other on on their stories and call each other out on stuff. Like, look, if there was a mix up with the card because of booking.com, yo, that's a quick fix. It's already taken care of. I've already contacted the Four Seasons and they've already issued a refund and they charge my card. It's that simple. Where did this random woman come in that you called a tramp? Somebody I became friends with on Instagram like maybe three days ago. It's just a reach and I'm tired of having to stay quiet and not defend myself. Yo, mental health is real and I understand how sometimes anxiety can get the best of us, but you just don't go on social media and start attacking somebody you say that you love, that you care for as a friend. And, and then you post pictures of you and my daughters together, but then you're throwing their dad under the bus. It's not cool, man. And uh, the unfortunate reality is I thought that I could be friends uh, and try to maintain some type of friendship, but I, I, that relationship is done. And I didn't want to come out and, like six months ago and be like, hey, I'm single again, because then people are like, oh, you're sassy. But this is the reason why I did it last time, because of this assumption that I'm leading somebody on and that I'm cheating. I have never cheated in my life. Find a woman that will tell you I cheated on her. I'm not successful because I cheat. When I'm committed, I'm completely committed. Now, I'm not gonna go there. There's a lot more I could talk about. I'm not gonna do it because this isn't about revenge. This is about saying, hey, wait a minute. This shouldn't have happened. Picking up the phone and talking calmly and saying, hey, Jay, I got charged in my card. You stayed at Four Seasons. Okay, cool. But then you had to find a, a random narrative to go with it. It's, it's messed up and, and the truth is now there's potential defamation behind it because I don't even know this person, never met her in my life. Never even had a DM with her. Again, here I am defending myself because of all of these assumptions and all these internet bullies who don't have a clue, not one thing, of, to, they don't know nothing about me. Tamar then says she want her gifts back, look. Okay, if I'm so mentally unstable, then give me my chain, pendant, and platinum presidential Rolex back. I couldn't have been in my right mind, friend, sir. The real story on you, my tube, on YouTube, she was talk texting. In 30 minutes, I should have listened to all of y'all, including me. I'm finna have all the ninjas, cause now I'm apparently now apparently I'm a trick. Well, she also posted this. Take a look. No, but all seriousness, I'm so glad this is over. And she's saying it's up now. She remembers who she is. You know what's so crazy? I never understand how when you all break up with somebody that you all of a sudden now remember who you were. How'd you forget? <laughs> how, do, do you, have you ever forgotten who you are in a relationship? I think so. But I think, yeah, I think so. But you I, did? You get caught up in the romance and you, you know, you start ignoring things that you shouldn't that you wouldn't traditionally ignore but i don't think that's this circumstance i think that she was lonely and she found a man who loved her with or without her wig <laughs> and fully embraced her and wanted to be famous mm -hmm. and as much as she doesn't want to be famous just like she said she doesn't love reality shows and will never do it again she's back on Bra braxton family values because when them checks dry up and they say you move back home with your mom you got to do the work Mm -hmm. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tamar followed that shade up with a video, and this video was four minutes and 14 seconds, just two minutes shy of JR's. Take a look. Y'all, I'm not trying to make this a big deal. I swear, it's it's not about, y'all, it's a th a thousand dollars. It's not, it's not, you know, make or break. It's the point. The point is, is that you wanted me to sit back and let you not only use my card. Let's just say it's a mix up. Okay, fine. 
But now it's different because you're using my card for your extracurricular activities. And let me just keep it gangster. I wouldn't even trip on that. You know what I'm saying? Wah, wah. It's not that serious. Me and your relationship status has changed the way I see you have changed. You know what I'm saying? Just like you outside, baby, I'm outside too. Like, let's stop pretending like you is the last of the Mohicans. You are not. You know what I'm saying? It's just not like, oh, I'm addicted to the white meat. Like, it was fine for what I had, but okay. It ain't giving that. And, I, and, and the truth is, I, I put too much on it because we, are, we were married. And I take my vows serious, and I thought that you did too. And so the truth is I was waiting for you to come around like a wife because all I know how to be is a wife. I was married to Vince and that didn't work out. And I, I got with D and we were getting married and I got with you and we got married. And, 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 and I married you after you ate somebody, you know, whole booty. Boo. So let's not talk about what and what happened before then. OK, don't make it seem like I'm a bad person. Don't make it seem like I didn't put up with a lot. Don't make it seem like, oh, I've been so gracious to her. And, you know, I have been giving grace and she's a da da ba da ba da ta da wop wop. No, baby, don't do that. We have given grace to each other. And I hate that I posted that last night for that 10 seconds that I posted and now that it's a frenzy today. But the simple fact of the matter is that I tried to call you and I tried to talk to you and you were so nasty to me. And at the end of the conversation, you're going to tell me to go take my meds. Something that nobody else in the world knew and something that you tried to weaponize against me. Are you saying that people who take mental medication or anxiety medication, they are not stable i would hate for you to say that as a lawyer don't do that the fact of the matter is i only came back to say this um i'm not delusional i am not crazy i don't have to throw myself on a man and yes we have been a strain for six months and we everything was just final on friday my feelings are are hurt because everybody is making it seem like I am crashing out over this person and I'm not. Um, I went ham simply because of your disrespect. And the truth is I should have gone ham a long time ago. And I did it because, um, and I'm sure that people have been here before when you are in love with a person who aren't in love with you back. And that was my case, but I didn't realize it until Turks and Caicos. I had no idea until Turks and Caicos. I knew that we had problems. I knew that, you know, things wasn't working, but I always thought that we loved each other because we always said that we did. I have to start loving me. And clearly, you know, all the work that I'm doing, you know, I'm definitely skipping over loving me because I felt like I loved you and I, I loved what we could have been and what we were more than myself. And I am so sorry, you know, to everybody out there that I, you know, put out this post last night. I was praying to God that it didn't go viral. I was praying to God that it didn't, you know, that nobody caught it. I was, you know, praying to God because I knew that, you know, it wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. It was an emotional thing. But I mean, sometimes when you have been disrespected to the level that I have been disrespected from this situation publicly, it'd be too much. There's no way you took a man serious with vows after he took a girl that didn't like you to a game, ate her butt, then turned around <laughs> and put a ring on you and left you while you got robbed. Allegedly. Allegedly. Your video screams desperation. <laughs> video screams want to be on Housewives of Atlanta and it screams broke if you did all that for a thousand dollars now I will loan you a thousand dollars to go away <laughs> what oh my god it's all the shots no I, I will loan her a thousand dollars to make this go a thousand I mean she's at her mom's house right that's what you said you said it. I'm just clearing it up. But you were thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. I'm I'm done. I actually miss Tamar. I will never be friends with you again. Like you're just you're you and Amanda Seals lack. Um, you and Amanda Seals Seals are almost like the same person. You lack self awareness. 
And this is what therapy does. It allows you to see, because I see all my own toxicity. I see all the stuff I did. I know I've come a long way. I still have a lot more work to do. I'm not fully healed of the trauma that you celebrities put me through. But I'm sitting here watching you and her, you fight over this white meat that you say ain't nothing. Meanwhile, after it went ate another girl's booty who hated you, he ate her butt out. I'll say allegedly, because that's what allegedly. she said. She said he ate her butt out. And then you went and paraded around Atlanta. Like, can I just tell you, Tamar? And I know that you may not care about this, but everybody's talking about you behind your back. Everybody. Everybody from Atlanta to California to London. Everybody that's in the business that knows that they knew me and you, they are talking about how foolish you look with this man. If you don't turn this into a bag, and you can't go to Yana because you didn't accuse her of doing stuff. Yana don't even like you. You know? Ain't that something you can't run to get help? Yana mm -hmm. can't even fix your life. Just you and Tony gonna sit up there and talk about it on the next episode of Braxton Family Values. All right, well, um, Tamar, I really do wish you the best, though. I hope that you get the help that you need. You still have Dish Nation to talk about this, but even the brat doesn't want to hear about it anymore. Like, they, everybody's over. I mean, she didn't tell me, so let's be very clear. The brat is a friend of mine. She and I, we do not talk about you. Me and the brat, all, all we talk about is she's so sweet and she, she gives me good encouragement, but we don't talk about you. So I don't want to cause no problems at work because we know you will go and attack somebody like you attack me. And you were really mad because I told everybody that you told me that Candy wears fake um, designer. But I think everybody debunked that. I don't know. Maybe you lied on that, too. I don't know. Well, either way, um, hope you get your $1,000. Bye. Ice Spice is in the news, and she's beefing with her friend Cleopatra. First of all, let me start by prefacing by saying I like Ice Spice as of today. I don't know if I'll like her next week. I don't know if I'll like her next month. <laughs> But I've consistently said I like Ice Spice, I like her movement and all that. But baby, Icy, what is going on with all your friends? They keep throwing you under the bus. They keep throwing, this is the second friend now I think that has thrown Ice Spice under the bus. Okay, well, Ice Spice and her friend Cleopatra have been going at it online. And in a six-part series on TikTok, Cleo broke everything down for the fans. Now, the two met about two years ago before Ice blew up. Uh, off that song, Munch. Let me show you a photo of them in Happier Times. Okay, this was them in boats and stuff. Before I get into this, can I just say, I'm really happy that all the friends that were close to me like this, like you know who, mm -hmm. hasn't done stuff like this. I will say, I have had friends of... 15 years, 17 years that I've ended relationships with, not in a nasty, messy way, that have not taken to social media to try to air me out or do, 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 do because clout is a drug, but I'm thankful that those people just went away and I went away. And that's why there's still a little bit of love and respect because friendships that expire do not mean they have to become a beef. You don't have to be in a beef with somebody because the relationship is over. You just have to go your separate way. Well, Cleo said, nah, she ain't going her separate way because she says she was always supportive of Ice even before the major fame. But now she claims that Ice soon became intimidated by her. And saw her as a threat in the industry. And Cleopatra's hour-long TikTok rant. And you can do an hour-long rant on TikTok? I didn't know that. I mean, I don't use TikTok enough to know, but an hour is a long time. You got a lot off your chest in an hour. <laughs> is there anybody you hate that you would do an hour-long TikTok rant on? No, I don't have an hour, hour of energy to give to somebody that I don't care about. Not even... <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it for an hour. <laughs> We could bleep that name out. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> she said that in July, Ice invited her on the Y2K tour, but things went left quick. Cleo said off rip, she knew something was up because before being asked to come on tour, Ice had just been exposed by her former friend, singer Baby Storm. Bitch, you tried it. And had claimed Cleo jealous and fake. Cleo said she checked Ice, who claimed she was upset because Cleo didn't defend her when asked if she was really Nigerian. Ice claims her mother is Dominican and father is black with Nigerian roots. Well, Cleo, who also claims to be Nigerian, said she couldn't defend something she didn't know about as the two had just met up. 
upon being asked. However, since being on tour, Cleo claims Ice's dad is a Hispanic man. Blasting Cleo. Now, he said he's a black man from the Bronx and that Ancestry.com said that he's 30% Nigerian. Take a photo of Ice and her dad. And this, or this is what she said on the I Nigerian Roots. Cleopatra, we met twice in the green room. We barely spoke. Who said I'm Hispanic? Oh, this is the father. I'm going to dead this right here. I'm a black man born and raised in the Bronx. Keep me out this bullshit. We took an ancestry test, more like 30% in a mix of other countries like Ghana, Ivory Coast, Senegal, Mali, Cameroon, Taino, Swan, Twitter. Having fun, though. Now, I know a lot of you blacks don't realize that we were all starting in Africa and then along the way dropped off by them people in different places. So there's a little black in all of us. So if you're Puerto Rican, Dominican, Cuban, Haitian, all that, it's all it all kind of goes back to the motherland some way. And although you sometimes tend to look up your history and rely just on Ancestry.com, you just need to know that. Just Google.com is your friend, okay? Well, now, Cleo said after Ice was exposed for calling her jealous and fake, she reluctantly apologized. After that, Cleo said Ice started habitually inviting her out and eventually inviting her on tour just one day before it started. Cleo said Ice had it all calculated and that the tour gave let Leo eat, wait, let Cleo eat, but give her the crumbs. And she said, despite Ice promising meals and hotels were covered, nothing was. Does this just sound, what is disgruntled friend? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> to me, if she gave you an opportunity to put you on, it's not her responsibility to follow through and make you successful. So, like, I don't ever expect you to give me everything and build it for me too. Like if she has ambitions to be an artist, like, and she's giving you the platform to do it, you got to run with it. The rest is on you. Like, don't get mad at her. Cause it didn't work out. What God had for her, God didn't have for you because you should be praying to your God to give you the blessings and the opportunities. Maybe they will come, but this type of energy will block your blessing. Cleo, you have to be aware that, when you put energy out in the world, there there's a higher power listening and paying attention to you. And when you put out this, why not me? Why then? Why then? Why then? Then God will say, you're not ready for it right now. So I'm going to hold on until you're ready. You got to get locked and loaded on your talent or the lack thereof. Because let's keep it real. I Spice came out with this wig on. <laughs> An orange wig. And made it in spite of all that. Y'all called her the Bronx Annie. Y'all call her all type of things. This girl came out with her own style, her own sound, her own thing. She'd, she'd been navigating through all the hate. She's literally going through the whole Cardi B experience where she went through the hate with Nikki. She's going through the hate with her friends. And she's still going to continue to rise because y'all got her dick in your mouth. Well, Cleo said her name was never updated on flyers, and she went on stage before advertised time. She had to share Ice's dressing room and initially couldn't bring anyone from her team to assist her, like helping with baggage, which led to Cleo complaining to Ice and Ice putting Cleo on Ice. I like how they did that. <laughs> well, after getting no help at their show in Philly and speaking up about it, Cleo, she had a lot to say. Take a look. Now we're going to get into the dispute that ended everything. So, I addressed everything to her. I should actually show how I addressed it. Because although it was very long, I want you guys to also keep in mind how so close friendships and relationships feel. Like, the breakup feels the same. The way you express yourself, it can kind of feel the same as, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it is very similar. So, when I was explaining everything that I went through... It was a long ass paragraph and like I was talking to my nigga, like I was breaking everything down because I want you to know exactly how I feel and how it made me feel exactly what I went through and how it made me feel. I want you to understand it. And I also want you to put yourself in my shoes and ask yourself if you would even go through that. You know what I'm saying? Because people fail to realize that she skipped a, a, a very important part in her career, which was the grind. She barely had to do that. She barely had to do that. And that's okay. Some people are lucky. 
Some people are lucky and we're going to call it luck. We're not going to call it her being blessed because I don't think the Lord will bless somebody like her. Ice Spice caught the videos and went over there to X Spaces doing it like Cardi B does. And she responded, take a listen. I was in listeners and I'm sharing my stage with you and you feeling so entitled. Like you thinking that my, my, like my peoples that work for me is supposed to work for you too. Like that's so crazy to me. Like how I'm in the shower, you going you gon' barge in while I'm butt ass naked trying to press me about some bags that you got to carry some bags. What? Like, Nah, that's that shit, bro, but all I could do is sigh about it because it's just like, what can you do, bro? It's like, damn, crash outs and they going on rants, bro. Crash outs and they going on rants, but fuck it, though. At the end of the day, it's whatever, bro. Like, this shit comes with it, you know, like, but the whole thing that's blowing me right now is like talking about some dark energy Trying to compare a tour bus to a slave ship. Like, what are you talking about right now? What? I wouldn't even respond to it. I would have left that thing right there. Whitney Houston would not have responded to Paula Abdul <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> Y'all need to start taking plays out of the icons playbooks. What do you what do you think? What do you think of all that? I think it's nuts. <clears throat> and I look back at again, like back in the day before you like popped, right? You would like do what you had to do to make it look like you were on the top of the world but when you pulled up to a club. Like, girl, if you don't have somebody to carry your bags, pull your pennies together and make it look like you're supposed to be there having somebody carry your bags. You said she made you share a dressing room with her. She didn't have to share her dressing room with her. She's the star. So, like, you're complaining about your friend putting you on. And then on top of it, like you said earlier, how dare you say she wasn't blessed? Like, her being given an opportunity is her blessing whatever whatever she has done in this life or a past life or whatever it was that blessing landed on her and you should acknowledge that and the more you acknowledge that and do the work on your side the blessings will come to you yeah. but don't knock her blessing yeah i'll Crazy. be honest i've never heard of you cleo and i've never heard of any of your music and because of all this i won't never play it i'm sorry and 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 i think it's just that like Knowing that she's a star, knowing that the only way you're going to get talked about is by doing this, knowing that this is the first and probably last time you've made it to this platform is because you hated on your friend. Were you ever really a friend? You know, I still carry my own bags. I don't I don't have my assistants fly behind me and carry all my bags. Now, if I'm traveling extended and I need help, then help me out because I can't carry all the bags. But I mean, I, I actually love the normality of still doing normal things. Uh, I don't want to do everything normal, but I, I do like doing some things. I just don't. I, and I also feel like when you have when you are a friend, your friend is not required to put you on. She didn't even have to give you that opportunity. So the fact that she did and let you this close and the scary part of all this is this is how Selena got killed, letting the wrong people get too close to you. And, and I, I'll tell you, even for me, you know, we kind of joke about it, but. My circle is so small, it's the same people all the time. Why? Because the minute you let somebody like this in, here we go. Well, uh, uh, Cleo started tweeting when that video or that audio went live, and this is a photo of her tweets. She said, imagine being called by uh, big by someone that was just big. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to bed, bro. Ozempic got y'all gas and fat phobic now, bet. And then she said, pussy. But she was shaking on your tour bus thinking Cardi sent people to get you jumped. Whole time it was a lady and her kids just trying to get an autograph. Of like, help, who the fuck told you to start with that lady anyways? Nobody you picked with her. Now you scared. Um, is this a way of getting a beef between Cardi and 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 Spice? Because from what I understand, they get along. And Cardi's o only said good things about Spice. And I know me and Spice kind of chit chat a little bit. Uh, via text and it's always positive so i don't know that there's even a beef there and i hope spice do not get y'all you and cardi from the bronx don't get trapped into uh, the game of trying to respond to all that well ice's ex-friend baby storm then chimed in of course she did this is what she had to say <laughs> She said, I tried to warn you and just and you just threatened to beat me up. Nevertheless, I'm sorry that happened to you. And uh, Cleopatra caught uh, the tweet and responded. And this is what she said. 
oh, I threatened to beat you up because you was doing all that because you because uh, was mad at ice. It didn't give you had any respect for me, boo. You really could have DM me from jump with that whole situation if you was on some real bitch uh, word. But thank you. Go away. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, well, Megan Thee Stallion is talking about her beef with Nicki Minaj. Now, Megan Thee Stallion just hit the cover of Billboard, and in her interview, uh, she spoke out about her music, politics, and beef with Nicki Minaj. Now, let's first take a look at some of the images. Uh, okay, by the way, Meg body is slay. Face is slay, body is give. Wait, y'all could have fixed that one on the right, though. That the little tuck. Anyway, <laughs> she looks great. Great, 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 great. Meg is beautiful. Well, in her interview with Billboard, Megan finally addressed her beef with Nicki Minaj, claiming that she genuinely doesn't know why Nicki dislikes her. While speaking on her January release track, Hiss, on which she aimed at uh, a collaborator turned opponent, Nicki Minaj, here's what Megan the Stallion said. Uh, they said, you took shots at Nicki Minaj. Is there a chance for a reconciliation or even another collaboration one day? She said, I still to this day don't know what the problem is. I don't even know what could be reconciled because I, to this day, don't know what the problem is. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. If people feel like I'm somebody to aim at, then I must be pretty high up if you're reaching up at me. I must be some kind of competition that makes me feel good. That makes me feel like I could rap because if I wasn't the shit, y'all wouldn't be worried about me. Basically, she she ain't she ain't sorry about nothing, and she don't care. And then you basically you look up to her. Well, in her Billboard feature, Megan also addressed whether she wanted more support from black men after the 2020 shooting incident where Tory Lanez allegedly allegedly shot her. And here's what she said. At this point in life, I really don't care. Maybe if you would have asked me this last year or two years ago, I would have wished I had more black people in general in my corner. It would have felt nice to be protected by some black men in this instance, but the more I wasn't getting it, the more and more I realized I wasn't going to get it. Who should feel safe and important at the end of the day is me. And I was going to make, I was going to have to make myself feel that way. I wasn't going to find it in people. I don't know at all. Now I don't care as long as I make myself happy, uh, feel happy, then that's what matters to me. You know, we always talk about protecting black women in particular when it comes to Megan Thee Stallion, but why y'all ain't protecting Kamala Harris? Is that still a thing? I don't know if it's still a thing. I've always said it's selective. Um, I love Megan's movement and what she's doing. Um, you know, we still haven't interviewed her and probably never will because I'm going to always have my opinions about her and her lack of sobriety. Uh, and Nicki Minaj, we we know she ain't coming over, but that's okay. <laughs> I want these two to reconcile because wouldn't a record with Megan, Nicki, and Cardi? Be lit. Oh my God, that would be so lit, but I don't think that's ever. With happen. the city girls rapping in the background. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like a whole thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, but either way, music is changing, and a lot of you are probably going to be unemployed not too long from now, anyway. So uh, maybe not these three, because these three are actually, I mean, she's an icon. She's doing her thing, and she's built up a lot of buzz, and Cardi is on her way to be an icon too. Um, all of you are so pretty and vibrant and have so much opportunity. I'm sick of talking about beef between women and hip hop. Can y'all just get an episode on baddies and just fight it out? <laughs> Cause Megan, we heard you love to fight. Ooh. I gotta call Megan before I put that out. I gotta be a journalist and ask her perspective. And call the other girl. And then have her come on the show. Who? Megan. Megan's invite. You know what? Somebody told me, stop commenting on those that don't come because the ones that do are the people that see how valuable you are. They need you. You don't need them. Which is true. We need each other. But I'm not asking. Listen, everybody's welcome on this show. You saw the email of who's coming on the show soon that mm -hmm. I would have never thought would pull up. And... Here we go. I'm going to do my research before that show. I'm going to make sure I, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make sure I know everything. Well, either way, I wish everybody the best. Um, Megan, do you get tired of being asked the same questions like who shot you, who you want to fight with? I mean, like at the end of the day, Tori's in prison, whether he did it or not. And Nicki Minaj is somewhere being successful on her tour. Can y'all all just be happy? Just shoot, do like Kamala did and just say, next question. <laughs> Heard it all before. 
All right, that's it. Let's get to thoughts and prayers. Who needs enemies when you have friends who will air out your business on the internet or on a record? Megan and Nikki have been beefing for years, and now Nikki's former protege, Ice Spice, is also beefing with another rapper, Cleopatra. That's some role model. Someone call in the OG rap queens like Queen Latifah, Missy Elliott, or even Angie Martinez because we need some UNITY, a ladies' night, or some type of anthem to bring the girls together and stop the FEMC on FEMC crime. We've got enough drama going on in politics right now between Kamala having to defend her blackness and Trump proving how he is down with the rappers. It's just way too much. Trump, you ain't never going to be invited to the cookout or get some carne asada. Trust me. Black and brown people wake up because his pandering claims against Kamala are just a deflection from his own actions. Trump is out here trolling y'all like Queen Naja and Clarence, despite them flying in a bride to be sign all over their socials. Right now, one reality is that no one's gotten down on one knee yet, except for Jeremy Robinson. Now, we all knew JR proposed to Tamar Braxton on their dating show, but she said they actually got married sometime between all those breaks and according to Tamar. JR even ate somebody else's booty. I just told you that. And she still married him. If that's not love, then what is? I mean, I don't know, but maybe we'll find out on the next episode of the Jason Lee Podcast. Until then, I'm out of here. Make sure that you follow us everywhere on social media. Keep up with us. And if you want to text me, you can do it right now at 310-388-6463. That's 310-388-6463. And also, make sure you're registered to vote. And if you're in Stockton District 6, vote for me. Oh, and Christina Fugazi. We're out. Peace. The Jason Lee Podcast.